Hello, uh, today I'll be presenting a solution um, which is based on Gibscam. This is Gibscam 2012 you see and the part on the screen. And I'll be doing some uh, three axis and five axis milling and then I'll demonstrate how you can take that programming from Gibscam into a software called Eureka and convert everything to a robot milling program. And the uh, robot milling program I'll be making today is for an ABB robot. Okay, what we can see in Gibscam is a few toolpaths. I have a few 5-axis operations and I have a 3D operation. If we look at simulation, it looks something like this. Okay, a few 5-axis machinings and one 3-axis machining, one 3D cutting. Okay, so that's pretty cool, uh, simple and easy. Um, then we have a tool. In this case, I'm using a ball end mill, diameter 20. And uh, what I need to do when going into robot milling, I actually need a few parts of the Gibscan programming. I need the tool information, and I need to have a solid model as a stock or as a part inside the robot milling. And I need to get the operations from Gibscan in a format that can be used inside the robot milling software. So if you need to export the solid model, you would click on the solid and say export STL. It's really simple. And uh, the STL format is something that the robot milling software understands. Also, if you would like to export the tools from Gibscam, you could use our tool manager. And from inside tool manager, you can export the tools in a format that is made for Eureka robot milling. The third thing you need is the CNC code. We created a post for robot milling inside Gibscam, so you can just hit use that post and hit process and it will make a conversion of all these toolpaths into a format that the robot milling software understands. This is not the robot code itself, it's just an intermediate code, it's a source code if you like, which will be converted into ABB or Motoman later on. Okay, so we have the part, we have this STL file, so we can move into Eureka. And in Eureka, software looks like this, we'll go and start a file and open up a project. So I go open, and I open up this demo file we have, the robot, and it builds up the ABB robot on the screen, so we can see that one. And um, this is a complete robot cell, so it actually has a working area, and it also has a C-axis table. The robot itself has six axes, and the coordinate base coordinate system is in the center of the base, and the part coordinate system is on the table. So the next thing I need to do here is try to bring, bring in one of the solid models from Gibscam. So I'm going to locate that coordinate system on the table. And then I'm going to select to import a shape, which could be the stock or the part or both. Open the part up and set some properties. I'll have it in green and that's okay. After this, I need to check my tool list inside um, Eureka and I'm going to go to the Eureka tool list here and see so that my tool matches what I had in Gibscam. And since I prepared it, I, I actually had the correct tool here. So I have a diameter 20 end mill and uh, the tool looks like something like this if you want to look at it closer with a holder. And we have a length for the tool, which is okay. So uh, you have other ways of describing the tools. You can describe it by clicking on these buttons up here. Or you can import the tool, as I said, from Gibscam Tool Manager, or you can import it from WinTool. Anyway, the tool is okay, the part is okay on the table. So what we need next is the program itself. So I'm going to load the program. This is the NC file that we created in Gibscam, and actually we're good to go. So I'm going to hit play and see what happens. The tool is loaded, the 5-axis operation is moving. And the toolpath is looking pretty much the same as in Gibscam, except the robot is moving. Okay, so we'll leave it alone for a bit and see if we get any warnings, if we have any problems. And it says we have two warnings. Okay, the first warning we have here is actually just a syntax error, so we can, we can skip that one. We can just double click uh, on that line and say delete, so that's okay. The second warning we have is something we call singularity. And singularity is, is the first position in the program. We could actually run the program again and you'll see where it happens. Okay. 
and uh, let's say pause and you'll see in the beginning that we get this orange little blip here and the orange blip means that it's not a serious warning but it is a warning so something with this go-to line is perhaps not what we want so okay I'm going to this position by double clicking on it and I can see that this, in this position the robot could probably be moving its joints in a different way to get here so this is what we will be editing now um, when we when we say that this this needs to be in a different way it, it means that I w would probably like to see this axis joint in a different position towards this head to prevent that the robot gets in a position where it gets locked up and can't move. So I'm going to go and right click and say edit the approach. And this is an intelligent little editor because when I drag this slider it's going to give me all these positions and in some areas I do not get any positions because this is something where the robot, the position where the robot can't move. Okay, so I'm going to look at how it's turning and twisting here and I'm going to select a position somewhere in the middle here, like so. And then I'm going to say OK. Click on the line before that one and say insert a movement. Move the joints to get to this position and it inserts the program line for me. OK, so I'm going to go and simulate again and see what happens. Okay, I get a different warning later on, also probably a singularity problem. So I'm, I just moved the problem, problem right now. But again, singularity is not a big issue. Uh, we could go back and, and try to fix that first move and see if we can find a better solution for the movement. So we go up there again and we select that move joints move. This is the one. And we'll go into approach again. Uh, sorry. Uh, we'll go into that go to move and we'll uh, select approach again and we'll find a different solution for that movement let's try this one and say replace as move joints and try again okay so let's play okay so now it seems to be moving pretty nicely there so that's that's okay and it's still not giving me any warning, so I'm, I'm in good shape. Zero error, zero warnings, which is good. Uh, in this stage, we could post and create a program for the ABB robot. But I don't want to do that. I want to optimize the C-axis for this machining. Uh, in some cases, you might, might have parts so big that the, the robot can actually not reach this end of the part. And this way, you, you perhaps need to start moving the C-axis. So I'm going to locate the first uh, go to move here. Okay. And in this stage, I'm going to ask it to move the C axis so that it is in a different position. So I'm going to go to external axis position. And once you see a green number up here, it means that it can reach this position. So I need to stay in the green area. Okay. And in this case, I would like to position the part like that. So I say update. Okay. And uh, in here, I insert a movement to this position. Move joints. And then I simulate again. Okay, so let's slow it down a little bit. So we say play. And I get the C-axis movement into that position. But in the next, next um, situation, you might have a problem reaching this area. So uh, in that case, I'd rather go and say, OK, I would actually like to see axis to be intelligent and move into the best position automatically. So I'll locate the first go to move here, go into external axis interpolation, and uh, optimize the rotary axis movement. Say OK. And then we have mode interpolation on uh, so that it understands that the C axis needs to be moved. So we'll say reset and run again and see what happens. Okay, you see this small thing here is something we probably should be working on. But now we got the C-axis moving. And as you can see, it's not just positioning once or twice. It's actually positioning for every operation and finding the optimal solution. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. Program is done. Zero errors, zero warnings. So I ran it through 
and I'll go ahead and save the posted file. So I create the robot code, and uh, we could go into the explorer and see what that looks like. Okay, so here is the finished code for the ABB robot. This is actually what the robot is getting. And that's it. That's CAM-based programming for a robot. Okay, thanks for watching.